All right. Today we're going to take a look at uh, sun angles and direction. So uh, what we want to get across for this lecture is um, a better understanding of what we would expect to see the sun do and why it changes over seasons. Um, when we talk about sun angles, um, more specifically, uh, high sun angles and low sun angles, um, when we would expect those and some of their effects, uh, we should have a decent idea of where we would expect the sun to rise and set and how that actually changes. So just like saying for it rises in the east and sets in the west, while that's still true, uh, we want to be able to lock that down a bit further to where we see that there is a shift in, um, you know, whether it's north of east or south of east and uh, it's, uh, north of west or southwest for the rise and set. And uh, when we talk about insulation or the angles of insulation, um, I'd like you to have a better understanding of that as well. So let's begin. Here, picture I borrowed from your book. And what we're looking at here is uh, supposed to be a chunk of earth. And then if you notice here, you've got south up towards the top. And we got north down here towards the bottom, which may seem weird, but you got to remember the sun spends the majority of its time in the southern sky. Uh, we've got west and east. They're in the right directions or the right positions. You know, we spell out ooh rather than we because we've got south over here. So here with the high sun angles, all right, this would be, notice the date, June 21st. Hopefully you're at a spot where you're like, ah. The summer solstice. Uh, notice here how early we've got our sunrise and how late we've got our sunset. You know, this is uh, where you're kind of getting into those summer months. Well, this actually being the longest day of the year, um, you know, if we were at 12 and 12, just say sunrise at 525, that would make sunset at 525 p.m., but it's out 8.30 p.m., so you're past that 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night. On the summer solstice, you should be at a spot where you're like, all right, that's going to be the longest hours of daylight that we get. Um, notice how high in the high, excuse me, how high in the sky the sun is. So if the sun's got to go way up here, like on this yellow arc, imagine if we put a string on this yellow arc and then we were to measure that string. Uh, it would be a lot longer path than what we'll see in the winter months. So since it's a longer path, it takes more time to cover it, hence the longer hours of daylight. The other thing that we wind up with is you've got the sun higher in the sky and it's blasting down more concentrated rays of energy. So the sun's going to rise higher in the sky in the summer. And because of that, we've got longer hours of daylight and more concentrated hours of sunshine. This is like the opposite, right? Our little plot of Earth is set up the same. Notice the date here. So this is supposed to represent the winter solstice. And uh, that should mean something to you, right? That's when you're thinking, all right, that's going to be the shortest hours of daylight. So if we look here, the sun's just rising in the southeast and just setting in the southwest. And notice we've got less than 12 hours of daylight because we're past that equal point or the equinox. Look how low in the sun, or excuse me, look how low in the sky the sun is here. So if we were to measure this yellow arc with a string and then cut that string and compare that to this guy, by this guy I mean the summer solstice, the winter solstice path is a lot shorter. So it's a lot shorter because it doesn't go as high in the sky. So you wind up with less hours of daylight. And that lower angle, those rays aren't as concentrated. Look at how much of the earth that the sunlight just kind of skims past here. It's heating up this area that's much larger than this, where all that energy is just blasting down and heating up a real concentrated smaller area. So basically what you have happen between the sun angles, you've got a higher sun angle. You're going to have longer hours of daylight, more concentrated rays. The reverse is true for winter. You have lower sun angles. You're going to have less concentrated rays and less hours of daylight. So here we've got the whole kit and caboodle, right? Uh, we've got uh, our four 
main seasons. We've got the equinoxes and the solstices. Notice the uh, equinoxes, like uh, the two guys here on the right, that the sun rises exactly east and it sets exactly west on both of those days. Because of that, bottom one here, the autumnal equinox, fall. Vernal equinox, spring, up top. Rising exactly east and setting exactly west. It'll give us exactly 12 hours of day and exactly 12 hours of night. So uh, I can tell you that this spot definitely wasn't at the equator. And if you think back to some previous lecture or some of our readings, you might recall that if you were standing on the equator, you would have the sun go directly overhead or be at your zenith. That should mean something to you as well. You look straight up, the sun would pass at the equator on the equinoxes. So if these pictures here for our equinoxes were taken or drawn or whatever at the equator, you'd see the sun rise exactly east and set exactly west, but it would take a path where it would be directly overhead. So is this a high sun angle? I don't know, kinda, that's a relative statement, but it would be overhead at the equator. So we've got a change here. Let's take a peek at these two solstices, right? There's winter at top and summer at the bottom. Notice, <coughs> excuse me, that in the summer, the sun rises way over in the northeast and sets way over in the northwest and covers the entire southern sky. Now take a look at winter. All right, the sun pops out in the southeast and it sets in the southwest and spends zero time on the northern sky. Sheesh, I wonder why they want to install solar panels on the southern side of your home or all my sun-loving annuals that I get planted, uh, you know, in the um, summer month, well, actually, late spring months. Why would I put flowers on the southern side of my home that really like the full sun? Well, because that's where the sun spends the bulk of the day. And depending on how your home's orientated, you might find that your backyard, or at least your back patio, if it's facing the north, it's shadier, because the sun spends the bulk of its time in the southern sky. So if we look at the rays, and what I mean by rays, that just means like the sun angle. And sometimes I'll say the days, that's like how many hours of daylight you have. So if we compare the extremes, these solstices, notice that our days are longer in the summer because this path the sun makes in the sky is longer. So that takes longer for it to occur. Then we look at our rays with the higher sun angle, it's beaten down in a more concentrated area that's going to heat that up faster than that lower sun angle where the rays are lower and it's stretching out that energy over a larger area. So it kind of makes sense that if you're heating up a smaller area, it's going to heat up faster. If I put a huge burrito in my microwave and a smaller burrito in my microwave, I know that the bigger burrito is going to take longer to warm. If you're trying to heat up more earth, That'll take longer, or it won't get as hot as the smaller, more concentrated areas. Pretty nifty stuff. Here's a little picture I found on the old interweb that shows that as well. So this is supposed to represent one kilometer of sunshine. And if you look at where the sun is directly overhead, shown here with these like red area, uh, that's one kilometer. This at a, meh. 62 degree angle looks like they use kind of a betweener angle one kilometer of sunshine and then way down here the sun's coming in at a 15 degree angle still one kilometer of sunshine so i could see where someone might think well if it's a kilometer of sunshine and a kilometer of sunshine and a kilometer of sunshine should all heat up the same no 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 this angle plays a huge role look at the bottom here this winter equinox that same kilometer of sunshine gets kind of stretched out over almost four kilometers of Earth. Whereas that one kilometer of sunshine overhead doesn't have to heat up much more than really a kilometer. So if you're using the same amount of energy to try to heat up a larger area, it's not going to get as hot. So if we look at the other extreme and you look at the same amount of sunshine to heat up a smaller area, it kind of makes sense that it would get hotter. So these angles play a huge role 
and how a area will get heated by the sun. It changes throughout seasons, and if we think about the Earth's shape, we'll see that also plays a major role in this as well. So, another little picture, <coughs> excuse me, showing us the same overhead rays, heating a smaller area, this will be hotter. 45 degree rays, stretched out, heating a larger area, this will not be as hot. So what do we know? The direct rays are going to heat up areas faster. Summer, we have more direct rays and the sun's out for a longer period of time. So those rays and days are the reasons for seasons. What causes Earth's seasons? Earth's seasons are caused by Earth's tilt on its axis. Instead of going straight up and down, Earth's axis tilts 23.5 degrees. Can you see why the tilt causes Earth to have seasons throughout the year? Let's find out. Here's the energy of the sun. Notice that it hits the lower half of Earth, called the Southern Hemisphere, most directly. The sun's energy hits the Northern Hemisphere too, but look at how the Northern Hemisphere is pointed away from the sun. Also, the light hits at an angle that causes the energy to be spread out over a greater area. So at this spot in Earth's revolution, it receives less of the sun's energy. When more of the sun's energy hits the southern hemisphere, it causes the temperature to go up. It's summertime. More sunlight, longer days. With less of the sun's energy hitting the northern hemisphere, it gets a lot colder. Put on your winter coat. Less sunlight, shorter days. Let's see how the seasons change as Earth revolves around the sun. So, why do seasons change? Because the tilt of Earth's axis causes the hemispheres to receive different amounts of the sun's energy. That's some cool science. All right, so uh, at the end there, it says, you know, the reason that we have seasons is the Earth's tilt, that 23 and a half degree tilt. Totally. Uh, sometimes I'll just say the cutesy little rhyme of the reasons for seasons is rays and days, because it's kind of catchy, but it doesn't do a whole lot of good if you can say it and you don't know what it means. The reason that we have seasons or like a change in temperature and the amount of daylight hours and how high the sun is in the sky is because of that tilt. But the effect that we get from that is the rays and the days, which is to say the change in sun angle, that's your rays, and the length of daylight hours, that's going to be the days or the amount of daylight that we actually experience. So when we talk about what causes the seasons, hopefully you're at a spot where you like the tilt. Um, here's something that's kind of weird. We're actually closer to the sun in the winter. And that seems counterintuitive, right? I mean, we get heat and energy from the sun. I've been around campfires, and I know if I get closer to them, it's hotter. And the farther away, it's colder. Well, it's not the same process. And another thing to consider is that 23 and a half degree tilt. And you've probably seen some of my crude little sketches where I've had the Earth's axis either leaning towards or away from the sun. That plays a much larger role than the distance that we're closer or farther away from the sun. And to be truth, you know, uh, it's a few million miles difference, which sounds like an awful lot. But when you're about 96 million miles or so on average away, it doesn't play as big a role. The sun's energy also traveling through with radiation. It's a bit different. But when we're leaning into the sun, or the 23 and a half degree tilt, the northern hemisphere, when it's tilted towards the sun, that gives us more direct rays. And that's more concentrated rays. And that's going to heat up the northern hemisphere. So we'd experience summer. 
The southern hemisphere would be leaning away from the sun at that point. Less direct rays, they experience winter. And then as we make our way to an equinox and eventually to the other winter solstice, the opposite occurs. The northern hemisphere leaning away, we're not going to experience those direct rays. So it's colder. Southern hemisphere would be the opposite, and they're going into their summer months. So a little common sense here now. If I said without the 23 and a half degree tilt, what do you think would happen to seasons? Well, if we're saying the 23 and a half degree tilt causes seasons, you get rid of it, no seasons. We just kind of go through like a fall or a, a spring type, you know, between or weather, 12 hours a day, 12 hours a night, all year round as we make our way around. So now if you like seasons, you can thank the collision with the moon for that happening. If you don't care for seasons, you can blame the moon. But uh, that's what we think caused the 23 and a half degree tilt. And we'll uh, discuss that a little bit later. So here's some pictures of the earth with what's supposed to be different sun rays hitting it. Same amount of sunshine, but the earth, it's an obloid spheroid, or it's really just like a three-dimensional sphere, right? Like think of a globe rather than a map here. Look up at the top. We've got rays getting stretched out more. This is kind of a longer angle that it's got to cover there up towards the poles. Look down at the equator. Look how much that direct energy just blasts down. It's basically almost always directly overhead. That's going to be a lot more concentrated. Why the heck do you think it's so hot at the tropics between the Tropic of Cancer and Capricorn? Those tropical areas, you think of hot areas, why? Well, because the sun's always basically going back and forth here, just beaten down with direct rays or darn near direct rays. Think about the poles. Why is it so cold? Because the shape of the earth, you're always getting a real low sun angle. It's never near overhead there. And it's got to stretch out to cover all this area and it doesn't heat it up as much. So is that the only reason why we have weather patterns and, uh, you know, climates like we do? No, if you're near an ocean or way inland or, uh, you know, at a mountain peak or down in a valley, all that stuff can play uh, huge roles as well. But the direct rays in summer, we're going to have those longer hours of daylight, regardless of where you're at. So you'd expect warmer temps. Is it going to be hotter at the equator than the poles? Oh, absolutely. But the hottest it'll get even up at the poles would be summertime. The reverse of that, of course, is colder in winter because of less direct rays and less hours of daylight. So what do you suppose caused the tilt? The moon's collision. That's what we think. And uh, like I said, we'll get into that a bit later as well. So if we look at the Earth's tilt and we're at a spot where we know it's 23 and a half degrees. If we look at that 23 and a half degree line of latitude north, it's called the Tropic of Cancer. That's the highest latitude that the sun will ever be directly overhead. And this occurs on the summer solstice. So if I were to stand on 23 and a half degrees north, or this line of latitude has a name. It's called the Tropic of Cancer. Just like zero degrees latitude is called the equator. This has got its own little name. I would see the sun directly overhead during the summer solstice. I would have over 12 hours of sunlight. It'd be a high sun angle. And uh, that would be the longest day of the year called the summer solstice. Well, Cash, we don't live at 23 and a half degrees. Dearborn Heights is at about 42 degrees north. That's true. So if I'm up here at 42 degrees north, do I have the sun directly overhead? No, but that's going to be the highest north that it goes and the highest sun angle that I receive in the longest hours of daylight. So what about wintertime? Well, 23 and a half degree tilt. This would be us leaning away from the sun. The sun's rays would be directly overhead, what's referred to as the Tropic of Capricorn or 23 and a half degrees south latitude. So if you were standing here, our friends in the southern hemisphere lined up at 23 and a half degrees north, or excuse me, 23 and a half degrees south, they would see the sun's rays directly overhead at the winter solstice. That's going to be their highest sun angles and their longest day of the year. Cash, what about us? Way up here at 42 degrees north. Well, 
That's the lowest that we'll have for a sun angle and the shortest that we'll have for daylight hours. So our rays and days are real, real short because the sun's way down here in the southern hemisphere directly overhead. And then that just goes back and forth. So you can kind of see that as the sun's rays go from our summer equinox down to our winter, back up, equinox, why you get that double up of equinoxes, because you're either basically adding or subtracting your hours of daylight or increasing or decreasing your sun angle. Pretty nifty stuff, huh? So the angle of insulation, uh, what the heck is that? Well, for those of you taking Spanish, you may know sol means sun, and angle of insulation, it's really just a fancy way of saying the sun's angle more insulation's energy from the sun. So if we talk about the angle and the role that that plays with the energy we get from the sun, we like the term insulation. And now where you're at on Earth has a lot to do with whether you're getting those high sun angles or low sun angles, regardless of time of year, right? So if I asked you, is it hotter at the poles or the equator, everyone knows that the equator, the equatorial region or the tropical regions, it's a lot hotter than the poles. Why? Well, because the shape of the Earth gives the poles not very direct rays. Or I guess another way of saying that is the equator is always getting blasted with darn near direct rays. Remember, the sun's rays are overhead from 23 and a half north to 23 and a half south. And it just basically is going back and forth overhead in that area, cooking it. So uh, that plays a huge role, the fact that the Earth is spherical. Would that be different if we were a square? It would, but... We're not. It'd also be different if we got rid of that 23 and a half degree tilt. So you're going to get a lot more maximum angles or higher sun angles at the lower latitudes or lower sun angles at the higher latitudes, like, you know, the poles. Check this out. Look at these times here. You start to get above 66 and a half degrees north or south above what we call the Arctic Circle and stuff can get crazy. Look at this. 11.40 p.m., 12.40 a.m., 1.40 a.m., 2.40 a.m. This is in the morning here. What the heck is going on here? How is the sun in the sky? Well, because when you start to get at these latitudes at or above 66 and a half degrees, you're going to wind up with chunks of the year where you've got 24 hours of daylight and chunks of the year where you've got 24 hours of nighttime. In other words, there's times of the year where you do not see the sun at all or times of the year that the sun does not set at all when you get to these higher latitudes. So I think that if you're really being able to pull this all together, you could conclude the sun's angles, the rays, must play a much larger role than the amount of daylight that we get or daylight hours we're exposed to the days. So if you're still not sure what I mean by that, think about this. If the sun's out for 24 hours a day, and that was the most important factor, it'd be blistering hot at the poles because the sun's out for 24 hours a day for, in some cases, a long chunk of the year. But it's not. So how could the sun be out that long, but it's still real cold at the poles? Well, would you say this is a high or a low sun angle? Yeah, it's a low sun angle, right? So yeah, it's getting exposed to more hours of sunshine, and that certainly plays a role, but it's not very direct rays, so it's still cold at the poles. Hope that makes sense. If not, please inquire. Hope all this makes sense. If not, please inquire. Should have a better understanding of rays and days and reasons for seasons and a little bit about the angle of insulation. But if you're confused or something pops up or you think uh, you'd like to expand on any of this, uh, please reach out. Till we meet again, take care.